Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Mind Right Game Tight Show with Michelle Morgan. I'm your host. I'm a transformational sports coach, so I work with athletes with the mental aspect of their game. So we have coaches and, and mentors and teachers who teach the skill set and also the physical part of um, sport. I focus on the mental part of the sports that we play in so that we can reach our full potential in sports and in life. For more information about me, you can check out my website. It's www.bethesoro.com. And I also wrote a book for student athletes, How You Triumph in Sports, Tools That Create a Triumphant Life. And you can check that out on my website as well. And what the Mind Right Game Tight segment is about, this segment is for student athletes. And these interviews are with current and former student athletes sharing their stories, something they've learned, adversity they overcome, and showing that, you know, with just perseverance, having your mind right to make your game tight, not just in sports and life, it can take you to a whole nother level. I'm here to inspire you and in, in all that you're doing as well. So tonight we're going to welcome Ray Bautista. She's from Carson. <laughs> She's from Carson, California. In high school, she was a member of the volleyball and cheerleading teams at a small private school. She then attended Los Angeles Harbor College and was a member of the volleyball team there. And she also was a member of the club volleyball team at University of Texas at San Antonio. So right now, she is currently a student at the University of Texas at San Antonio. And she's working towards earning her bachelor's degree in kinesiology with the emphasis in athletic medicine. Ray will be applying all the knowledge that she's learning and pursuing a career in becoming a certified strength and conditioning specialist with the professional basketball team, in turn then opening her own sports, health, and fitness facility. When she opens her own fitness facility, she would like to travel around the world speaking about sports analysis, functional body movement, and motivating others as well. So thank you, Ray. Welcome to the show. Hello, it's a pleasure. <laughs> awesome. We're glad to have you here. So when you were in high school, you were a cheerleader and you were on the volleyball team. So how did you manage doing those two sports at once, especially when the cheerleaders, they're supposed to be cheering at every sport? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, well, our main sport for guys was basketball. And so they put such a huge emphasis on basketball. So other sports really didn't matter in a sense. So it was hard, especially because I was also a, um, I was in charge of my class as well as a secretary for the school. But it's just time management. When you figure out exactly what, what your purpose and what your goal is, then it just becomes easy to prioritize what you need to get done. And once you prioritize what you need to get done, everything else, it just becomes easier to put in together. So yeah, it was hard. It was definitely hard. I'm not gonna say it's, it was easy or anything. Um, and especially at a very young age, it's kind of hard to prioritize, you know, what's what's important. But once you figure out, you know, what's important to you, you know, everything else will come easily to manage and everything. So and so, like, not only with just sports having to prioritize, but also with school as well. So was there something that happened, or did you have any mentorship that kind of guided you along that way and saying, like, this is how you prioritize, this is how, like, you got to figure out what, what means the most to you. So how did you get that guidance, or did something happen that kind of made the shift happen within yourself? So I went, um, this private Christian school, um, it's a Baptist school, and they really focus on your purpose in life and um, God's leading in life. And I, at first, I didn't know what that was. And, you know, that's okay. To be honest, that's okay. But the person that helped me so much in high school to get myself together and figure those things out was my high school um, cheerleading coach, Miss uh, Salary Ramirez, and she unfortunately passed away. And when that happened, for me, everything kind of changed. And when I mean changed, it, I lost my sight. I lost my vision of who I wanted to be and my focus of all the dreams and aspirations that I wanted to go for at the time. But yeah, for me, it was basically a coach, you know, who really mentored me and helped me guide me along that path. That's awesome. So it shows like how important, you know, mentorship was for you. And then after, you know, your coach passed, did you have someone kind of 
take that that leadership role or that mentorship role for you or how did that kind of help happen and how did you I mean overcoming that because it sounded like you really looked up to this woman you know so how did you overcoming overcome that loss so it was it was hard and it took a couple of years um, even after graduating from high school to find someone who who could mentor me like Miss Sally Ramirez did and it took a lot of time especially and a lot of figuring out on my own and so sometimes I feel that things just happen for a reason and so sometimes you just have to go and and do what you think is right for you and in that process you'll find someone who will be able to mentor to you and right now I have a great mentor he's a he actually is a strength and conditioning coach for the Orlando Magic G League. And so I have him and, and it just, it was a process. It took six years to be able to find him and everything. So it, it was just, you know, showing up and, and figuring myself out and figuring who I wanted to be like and everything. So it just took time. And so how did you, in speaking about mentorship, because that's something that, you know, we talk about and it's very important. Sometimes we don't, realize how important it is to have someone that you know we can go to talk to who that we trust whatever our concerns are that are going on within our own lives and not only that just like with our career who we have questions for so how did you get in contact with this person like how did that kind of happen so I was looking for opportunities and um, just to become a strength and conditioning coach and uh, my professor at UTSA Dr. Donovan Boat he's also um, one of um, my other mentors he pushed me to go out to different events to meet people and to just talk about what I'm passionate about. And so come to find out there was a strength and conditioning event in Chicago. And so I didn't have the money for it or anything, but God does provide. <laughs> and I went and I met he was the first person I met coming to this event. Didn't know anybody, was scared, you know, out of my mind, like, who, who am I going to talk to? And I met, you know, um, Hasif Basihi is his name. And he's such a wonderful guy. We just, we just talked until the event started, and we got connected there. And ever since then, you know, I've, he's been my mentor. So, like, how does that make you feel knowing that, like you said, like, you didn't know how you were going to get to Chicago. Like, you did not have the funds. You didn't feel like you had the funds in the bank. So, you know, what led you to take that leap of, like, faith, like, almost a belief in yourself to know, like, I got to figure out a way to get there. So what encouraged you? How did you make that happen? Because there's times a lot of us feel like, I, I can't do that. And a lot of the times it's like the fear that holds us back. So how did you overcome that fear um, in making that possible and then seeing where you're at right now? You know, I, I knew, I believe in myself and my craft of being a straight and conditioning movement specialist. And I knew that, you know, if I couldn't believe in me, how can anyone else believe in me? And so I knew I had to invest in myself. And so I, had, I even did little things do nutritional programs. I even cooked for my friends. And so they bought meal plans and everything. And I just had to figure out, okay, so what can I do to push myself there? Because that's where I see myself going and everything. And so I did little things like that to provide for my way to go to Chicago. And, you know, lo and behold, help from friends and family um, supporting me. I was able to go to Chicago and it wasn't because, oh, you know, hopefully something were to happen. They believe in me because I believe in myself. So I think that's where everyone's just like, okay, well, let's support Rianne because she believes in herself. And, and if you can't believe in yourself, then I feel like why should anyone else believe in you and support you? So I think that was a major key into why I was able to go to uh, Chicago and, you know, meet my mentor. Awesome. And so like what guided you into wanting to become like a strength and conditioning specialist? Like what led you down that path? Um, so it took, it took different avenues and aspects. Um, so when I graduated high school, I stopped playing volleyball and I gained a lot of weight. And so I was almost maybe 50 pounds overweight and so that was for like two, three years I was, I was 
overweight and not doing any sports and I felt like I was kind of lost in a sense trying to figure myself out and you know I got in contact with my stepsister who I have not met until um, I was 21 and so when that happened she was like oh come here you know we'll, we'll lose weight together and so we started doing that and we got into a fitness group and so it got me back into sports and I was like okay well you know I really miss doing this you know this is something I'm passionate about so let's let's make my career about this and so I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do yet but I knew that if I were to just keep going forward in in this decision you know it, it was going to happen nonetheless um, and I was going to figure it out so a year later I met AJ Gaspora who's a basketball player overseas and so he got hurt and everything and he wasn't very 100% in playing basketball but he you know he still played basketball overseas and, and you know, got really good opportunities and just seeing how that affected him I wanted to pursue my career in movement special specialty so and strength and conditioning so just meeting different people at different points in my life kind of guided me in that sense but I, at first I really didn't know what to do so, <laughs> so mm. just make it clear point that sometimes you don't have to know what everything but just you know following your gut decision and following what you're passionate about can lead you into your purpose and everything so it just takes time I, I totally understand and then also like going back to that where it kind of all started where you said you felt lost and and you gained 50 pounds and all that so what do you think where did the the lostness like come from do you know where that where that happened and then kind of like where did you see the light to kind of like you know click on like okay I, I gotta like change and I can come out of this like what where did you get lost where did, what was going on at that time you know that you can look back and say I, I see it well a lot of it was just because you know I went to a small private school um, and I wanted to rebel <laughs> And figure myself out because I felt like my parents were kind of strict on me. Um, so I was like, you know, what? I can figure myself out. You know, I got, I got myself. It's all about me, me, me. If you can't handle me, then, then I'm gonna go out and do me. And so that's exactly what I did. And I just being lost um, in that sense where, where you're just, it's just you're focused on you and you know what you get out of it instead of just you know, my parents and my decision for, you know, who I want to impact and everything. So all those decisions of being lost was just, you know, what can I get out of it? What's, what, how is it going to benefit me in a sense? So that's where I can say I can pinpoint everything about being lost. And so like when you were rebelling at that time, like, you know, coming from a small school and then your parents were, were strict. So was it more so like kind of like their vision they saw for you or was it like you can't stay out past 11 o'clock or you know what did that strict mean because I think a lot of us experience strict in different ways mm -hmm. and so it's great just to sh like if you're if you don't mind sharing like what strict meant so we can kind of get a little bit more sense into like you know oh this is this is what happened with Ray the strict so when I went to this um, Christian school, um, they taught that we're not supposed to hang out with unbelievers or we weren't supposed to go to movies and do little things like that. And so my parents kind of bought into that, those whole rules and I couldn't wear or jeans or, you know, uh, pants. And so for me, that kind of, I felt that um, it kind of hid me aside if that makes sense like I wasn't being who I was truly meant to be because of those rules and those rule um those guidelines that my school set and my parents had bought into because it was a Christian school and they were so strict so um it was just it was it wasn't necessarily I couldn't go past late out it was more so you know about religion it was about um the rules that this school has set in a sense so and then now that you've kind of found your purpose and you found like who you are and what you love about yourself and you know what you want to do has that enhanced like your relationship with your parents and 
you know, they're on board with you as well and supporting you through that movement that you've created? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm, I can say my, my parents are my best friends. I call them for anything. And, and, you know, I never, growing up, I never thought that I would have this close relationship with my parents because, you know, my mom was always working and my dad was working overseas as a chef. And so I never really was raised by my parents. And so I kind of had that resentment against them growing up. And I never saw myself like having this close relationship with them. But yeah, I call them like almost every every week. And, and, and they understand that I'm busy. But I'll text them and tell them I love them. And they, you know, text me that I've never in a million years yeah. thought <laughs> ever do that. But yeah, they're, they're my best friends. Awesome. And did you have a conversation with them on like this is – you know, this is who I am, or like, how did that transition happen? Like, share that part. I think that'd be great. Um, so they saw a lot of the changes that were um, happening with me. They saw like I was actually being more genuine, and that I wasn't lying to them about you know who I, and everything. Um, they just saw that I was so passionate about what I, you know, what I do, and like what my pat. Uh, about strength and conditioning and sports and, and making a big impact in the community. And sometimes they're kind of questioning what I, I do sometimes, like traveling a lot, but they're 100% on board with what I do and, you know, what I aspire to be. It took a while, though, to see all the changes that I was making. So sometimes I would tell them, like, yeah, you know, this is for school. This is for my aspirations and my dreams. And they're like, are you sure that's, you know, what you're really going to do. But once they saw me like really being consistent with this and, you know, being really passionate and being outspoken about this, they were 100% in. So that's def definitely a testament to you and something that, you know, like I think, you know, we'll go into a little bit later because you work with like youth as well. And it's like owning like who you are. And I know sometimes it's hard because not just like it could come from, you know, not just your family, it can become from outside school friends. Social media, there's so many avenues where we feel like, oh, am I fitting into this right box? And really, it's just about owning who you are and loving yourself. And then when you begin to do that, then, you know, it's like I have, I can believe, I can come on board or I can't, but if I'm going to come on board, you're going to know it and you're going to definitely, um, you know, keep that, that circle around you. So that's awesome that you grew your voice of who you are and your parents mm -hmm. began to see that and they respected that as well to continue to support yeah. you. So that's awesome. Definitely not just a testament to you, but to your parents as well, because that takes a lot for us to see somebody changing into something like maybe that's not what I wanted in them or I thought, but this is who they, they are. And this is how they're being a beautiful person to themselves and to the world. So that's awesome. Thank you. Um, and so you were talking about the, the gentleman that you met who plays basketball overseas and he was injured. Now, when you were playing sports, did you experience injuries of any kind? Yes, I experienced um, two concussions um, playing volleyball in college and um, a, a sprain. So how was that transition? So was that part of the reason, like, why you want to also go into that avenue of sport where the functionality of body movement, the strength and conditioning, because, you know, those are the types of things that help prevent injuries, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, so going through my concussions, I mentally went through a phase like I wasn't good enough because, one, you know, I was doing very, very well in my season prior to the concussion. And so I feel that if I would have learned how to move more functionally to avoid getting injured, you know, that's something that I, I wish I would have known. And that's why I think that I'm very passionate about what I would do as well. Because I want, I don't want kids to have to go through what I went through with the whole concussion injury and the ankle sprain. So definitely it helped mold my decision into strength and conditioning. And so what do you mean when you say moving functionally so like maybe I'm like well, okay so I, I move and I can do things so aren't I moving functionally so what does that really mean and what you're trying to like teach a person to do so functional movements sometimes we have these little uh, moves that 
aren't essentially beneficial to to moving faster. So if I were to move in a certain way, and it's not necessarily the right way, for instance, if I were to like to run, I could be hurting myself in a way that I wouldn't know until later because my body's being so used to this movement that my my muscles tend to conform to that. And so when that happens, we move and everything, and we finally get that injury because our body's so strained to that, and we get that injury, then something that's not movement efficient, if that makes sense. So it's almost like when I'm learning, even just to walk or run, like I'm assuming – that there's like a way that our body was built to do those things, mm -hmm. but we can start to practice bad habits in, in creating a shift, I guess you can say, in our body, our bones, our muscles, all those different types of things. And mm -hmm. so if I'm doing, so I guess slouching might be something, yeah. okay? <laughs> so slouching, um, <laughs> slouching could be a bad habit that we form and I don't know, is that something that we've seen in athletes? Like, okay, they're a sloucher and they might be more prone to this type of in in injury. Like, I'm not sure if there's that type of research that's done, but I'm assuming that's kind of like where we're going, like where you're going with what you want to do. Um, well, yeah, so basically sports analysis, we don't necessarily see like, oh, everything that they're doing where they're slouching or, you know, they're walking a certain way. Um, and we don't necessarily focus on that. We focus on their their functional movement as an athlete and what they're doing wrong. Um, for instance, the way that you jump, if you jump a certain way, but you land your, um, if you land way over your toes or you're landing on your heels, then that's, that's not a very good movement because you're prone to injury and you're, you're just using the wrong parts of your body that, not necessarily wrong parts of your body, but just the wrong muscles. And so that tends to, when it gets hurt, using those muscles again and using that movement would not be beneficial because you're hurting yourself even more. Got it. And that's why it's important for, you know, where there are particular strength and conditioning coaches for different sports because this movement is different across the board in all sports. So it's like, strengthening those muscles that you're going to constantly use because maybe if we're used to like a certain workout um, or routine, maybe that doesn't strengthen those muscles that I'm going to use while I'm playing volleyball, for instance. So, you know, it's, that's why it's great to have those coaches who know obviously the body, but also like training the sport for that particular sport the right way too, because you don't want to miss out on not training your body for a muscles and part of your body that you're constantly using, you know, in a particular sport. So, I think that that's really great. And then now you're working with youth. So what are you doing now with working with youth? So right now I'm just doing a lot of strength and conditioning um, with um, basketball players, volleyball players, and soccer players. But, oh, I'm sorry, football players as well. So I work with them on strength and conditioning, movement functionality. Um, I'm still learning. I'm shadowing a lot right now. Um, but I also work with, the, with San Antonio Sports and work with low-income communities and help them with them and give them a better or give kids a better way to or not necessarily give them a better way but to involve sports into your life the way that they want to mm. Mm -hmm. what does that mean most of the kids that we work with they don't really know what they want to do essentially but we give them avenues like playing tennis playing basketball, volleyball, and whatever they're interested in and kind of mold that in, into and mold what they want and do uh, that. That makes sense. <laughs> so giving them options on different sports that are available to them. So, you know, maybe, I don't know, I'm just guessing, like they're used to seeing like, like the main three, like basketball, football, and baseball, for mm -hmm. instance. And then it's like, oh, there's tennis, there's volleyball, there's, you know, track and field, there's all sorts of different types of sports that, you know, you might find interest in. Yes. Is that kind of the idea of it? Yes. That and as well as, like, different events 
for San Antonio. Like they do major events such as soccer games and we volunteer for, you know, little things like that. It's, sometimes it's not as beneficial to youth in that sense, but it's more like a, a sports in general as well. Got so it. yeah, there's, they do a lot, actually, they really do a lot, but um, they definitely um, help kids and sports and, and kind of mold that interest and everything, give them different avenues, as you said. And then what are some of, like, the conversations that you're having with those youth since, you know, you came, you know, as a student athlete as well. So what are some of the conversations from the things that you learned through your course of your journey that you're now providing to those young people? Well, mainly it's just finding your purpose. You know, my, my foundation and um, that I want to open up later on in life is um, relentless purpose. And so what that means and what I tell all my kids is that Sometimes there are different distractions and everything, and we can't allow those distractions to, you know, get a hold of us. And, and distractions can be something like, you know, girlfriend or boyfriend, TV, or, you know, sometimes our friends can be big distractions that kind of lead us off into, you know, something that we're not supposed to do. And so what my main idea and point is, you know, find your purpose, figure out who you are, because if you don't know who you are, you'll allow people to dictate who you are. And that's not essentially what's going to make you happy and what's going to fill you, you know, with joy. And so I tell them, you know, figure out who you are, um, figure out your purpose and make decisions off of those. Because a lot of the times people think that, or these, my kids think that I'm just this collective person that, you know, has this past that is easy and, and I'm all of a sudden this happy-go-lucky me, but it's not that. And I had to figure that out. And so when I tell, and I told them, like, I tell them, excuse me, that, you know, it wasn't easy. And I try to tell them just figure out you first. And that's, I feel like that's the most important thing in order for you to go forward in life and be successful in life is when, you know, you figure out you and your purpose. What would you say to someone who's like, I don't know what my purpose is, you know, because you've been there, many of us have been there. So if you're speaking to one of those youth and it's like, well, I don't know what my purpose is, like, what's your, what's your guidance for them when they say that then? I say, you know, do what you're passionate about. Make decisions off of what you're passionate about, period. Because had I not figured out, I'm really passionate about sports. I didn't really figure that. I mean, like I said, I wanted to rebel against my parents and everything. And so I kind of figured, oh, it's about me and partying. It's me and figuring and doing me. But had I really, like, went and decided on sports and what I was passionate about, you know, maybe my, my future would have been different. And I, I wouldn't have made some of the des dumb decisions that I have made. But, I, you know... Looking back at it, I, I am happy of who I am, but it took so much time, took so much, uh, you know, hurt to get to this person. And so, you know, I, I'm, what I tell everyone is that find your passions and go with your passions. So there you go. And what's your love, so. <laughs> 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 well, that's awesome because I think that, um, you know, what you're saying, you know, it, it obviously it makes sense. And that's why I, I say, like, there's books. That's why we have these interviews with Maya and Red Game Tight. It's It really is so that we don't make the same mistakes that someone else already make. You know, I know it's easy to say, like, well, I'm young and it's okay if I make mistakes. And it's like, but you don't have to. You don't have to. It's a choice. And so you know, you telling, sharing your story about, you know, how you could have handled things differently and just kind of tuned in more to yourself. And maybe rebellion is more so like, um, it's about the other person because I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. Because really we're doing things, we think we're, we're doing it to somebody else, but really we're only doing it to ourselves. Right. And so it's like saying like, this is really about you and, you know, what is it that you want to do and what's your, what are you passionate about? And do it for you, not to prove to somebody else or rebel against somebody else. Because that other person is still going to live their life. And right. you are the one who has to live yours as well. So definitely listen to, you know, like what Ray is saying. Because I think it's, it's so great because you shared so much 
um, of your story with your family and then just overcoming that lost feeling. And also, like you said, reaching out for mentors, like, you know, reaching out to somebody like, you know, how did I, how do you do this? You know, this is how I feel. And I know sometimes our feelings are like, they're surrounded in this like treasure chest, like no one's going to get to it unless you have the magic key. And, you know, hearing your story is like, there's so many of us out here who are, who have gone through it or who are currently going through it. And it's knowing that, you know, you're not alone, reach out to people that you can trust and really look inside yourself. And it's like, what do I love to do? What am I passionate about? And, and learn, learn from Ray, learn from me, learn from all of us who have made those mistakes. You yeah. don't need to make them, we promise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, well, well, thank you for sharing that. And I want to thank you again for being on the show today as well and being vulnerable and sharing those things that you talked about with your family and your life and how you overcame that fear to be you. And here you are looking forward to starting your own foundation coming up, which we'll definitely be looking for. So are there any social media um, handles, websites that can keep us in contact with Ray? If anybody has questions, they want to reach out to you, where can they find you at? Yeah, so my um, Instagram is rnb, so R, the letter N, B, <laughs> underscore sports health. Um, and then for my Twitter, it's R A N N B underscore eighty five and my Facebook is Ray Bautista R A E B A U T I S T A. Awesome. And so for any of those letters you might have missed, I'm gonna have her social media handles in the description of this video. So go ahead and just click on the description and you can just go ahead and click on those and find her there so you don't have to like what R N okay, you got it. It's in the <laughs> description. Oh yeah. <laughs> so one last thing before we go, you just have to finish this sentence. I am grateful for my family. Well, thank you, Ray, once again for being on the show. I appreciate it. I appreciate you and all that you're doing, the story that you've shared, and also what you're doing now and how you're going to move forward with helping student athletes people in general, because we all use our bodies every day. So functionality of, you know, moving is something that we're doing all the time. So that's just beneficial for life in general. So thank you for that. Thank you for the work that you're doing with young people as well. And so we just look forward to hearing more about, you know, how you progressed on your journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Treasure yourself and shine, everybody. Okay.